in my group, um, we have a, a very broad range of things that are happening. It reflects the fact that I see patients in the Bronx who are some of the most diverse people you'll see in the United States. Um, so it's everything from the genetic uh, events that cause them to have diseases to questions about wh what's happening when you have all of these um, uh, very diverse um, individuals who are known to have higher rates of deficiencies in micronutrients like vitamin D, what happens as regards their, um, their risk of, of those kinds of um, exposures giving rise to ch problems with the next generation. Um, it's, uh, they're fundamentally issues that have to do with um, how cells make decisions about how they're going to differentiate, what sort of properties the cells will have. What are we doing to our bodies when we have the Western diet? Um, we're very interested in fatty liver disease as a, as a model of how things can go wrong in, in cells, despite the fact that they should be genetically quite robust. Um, a lot of our research is based on the idea that we can use genomic assays of various types to understand disease mechanisms. And then we're quite agnostic about the disease. So we have programs in the lab that look at aging, and there's a, we're, we have a fascinating uh, study of T lymphocytes in aging that we're currently working on. Um, one of my junior colleagues, Masako Suzuki, very talented junior faculty, is looking at vitamin D deficiency in a mouse model and finding incredible um, uh, phenotypes that have been very understudied in this particular condition, uh, exposure. Um, we're also looking at how stem cells retain a memory of prior exposures and how that influences their differentiation capacity. It's something that we call stem cell priming. It's a term that has been used a lot. But it's now something that we believe that we're going to be able to apply using genomic techniques, including single cell studies, cell tagging type of experiments to look at the, how cells make decisions while stem cells in response to some sort of perturbation that then makes them become more likely to be uh, fat forming or bone forming. Um, and these are very epigenetic paradigms in the oldest definition of the, of the word. Um, but it's also potentially a really interesting disease model. Things that happen in terms of exposures while you're in the womb or while you're a child, how they can uh, give rise to adult disease. Um, so we're, we're, we're interested in any genomic technique that allows us to get insights into a phenotype. So we also have um, studies that look for mosaic mutations in the body, that, that um, innovative approaches that we're using for that. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, I want to understand why the kids that I'm seeing are, have diseases right now or are predisposing themselves to diseases that they will have in adulthood. In the field of epigenetics, I think there's going to be um, a, an increasing convergence with the f area that we're calling functional genomics, where we understand that each of us is very different in terms of the DNA sequences that we have. And a lot of that difference is read out as current, currently as what we'd call epigenetic differences, so DNA methylation, chromatin structure, gene expression. Um, I think we're in a very good position in the world of epigenetics to become the curators of DNA sequence variation and understand why DNA sequence variation gives rise to um, cellular differences that ultimately cause us to have the differences in how, how we are as healthy individuals, but also the differences that we have in terms of our susceptibility to disease. And this is going to be facilitated, obviously, by um, just sequencing more people and understanding the variability that occur occurs in populations. Um, it's also going to be facilitated by some of these fascinating new technologies that are out there that allow us to study um, the things that are happening within the genome at very precise resolution, not only and on the nucleotide level, but also in individual cells, so that we can, we can really uh, get a handle on what's happening from cell to cell within a tissue. Um, once we have uh, that kind of convergence, I think we're going to have great ways of interpreting the DNA sequence variation that we have. Uh, but one of the key things that we're going to need is to be able to study the cells that mediate phenotypes, mediate diseases. Um, so what we're very excited about right now is the explosion of applications of differentiating pluripotent stem cells from humans, um, which can be very diverse humans, into common um, uh, differentiated cells across all these people, and then look at the differences that exist 
in um, the regulatory landscape, the DNA sequence, and um, ultimately cellular phenotypes. That to me is where we should be thinking about going as a field, whether you call it epigenetics or not.